Okay, welcome back to the developing a real world application using Entity Framework 6. Dot. And it's a good thing we called it 6. Dot because, as many of you may or may not know, a new version of the Entity Framework was dumped on us on the 17th. And it includes uh, some pretty big fixes, uh, some of which I'm going to go over in a different video, not this one. I just wanted to show you how it impacts our project here. Uh, I've checked in the code, so if you get the latest version of the source code, uh, let me know. I also got a new router. Uh, I've tested getting the source code locally and, and remotely, but if you have any trouble getting the source code, let me know immediately, please. I'll look at the router and see if there's something messed up with it. Uh, but our old one bit the dust. Uh, first time we've lost a router uh, for performance reasons, but uh, we're fixed. We're back up and running. Things are good. So I want to go over a couple changes we made here. Uh, the new version of the Entity Framework is 6.2. So you remember we referenced it in a lot of these packages and what it did is it adds in the packages.config, or 6.1, I'm sorry, it's a new version. In the package.config, uh, there used to be a 6.0.2, and so the way you get, got rid of it was you just went in here, highlighted it, deleted it, and then went back to the project, right-click, go to uh, your NuGet packages, and then it would show as if it wasn't installed. It, it is now, so obviously it shows checked, it's checked in. Um, but you reinstalled it for each one of these. And I'm happy to report that everything installed and upgraded uh, with no issues. So you may have some issues building it when you first get the new version of the, uh, the source code. Um, if you're using Visual Studio 2010 and you're like I am on some other computers for actual work stuff, um, you're having trouble building it, send me a personal message or some workarounds, some various things we can do, but I'm not going to go too far into them here because uh, most people are using 2012 or 13 these days. Um, another thing I want to go over is a change as we wrap this thing up uh, that we're making uh, to the main form. You'll notice now that I can click on a name and right click and I get last seven days, 14, 28, and 365. And what this allows me to do is by selecting one of those, I selected 365, I can pull reports for that given time frame. And that's done with the context menu and a couple of function callouts from the main form, which I'll show you. So again, you just right click someone's name and you know you can go last seven days if I wanted to or last 365. And it remembers that selection for all the people from there on. And you could put it somewhere down here in the status bar if you wanted to. Everything else remains the same. Uh, if I click on it, I still get this. I still get the print. Uh, we haven't added anything really earth shattering. But the Entity Framework upgrade is a big deal and had a lot of people really nervous. Um, but I'm happy to say they really did a great job. Uh, no, no headaches, no problems. So that's how you did it. You just deleted from the packages.config on each project, upgraded the NuGet by manage right click manage NuGet packages go out there and get the new one um, but if you download the source code you're gonna have it so I'm gonna go ahead and commit here commit my changes and I'm going to show you on the main form that context menu that you saw pop-ups right here you'll notice it shows up and there's our last seven days 14 28 and 365 now if I click on the events over here for each one of these it has an event for its click. So if we go look at its click event you'll see that every one of them sets a days to report back which is a new variable we have on the main form class to a negative seven and then it calls this refresh reports list. They all call the same function. The only difference is the number of days they set this days to report back uh, flag to and not flag variable. Uh, the refresh report list just says look uh, as long as someone selected uh, refresh the control which if you go there you can look at the code it goes back and it makes a call to our DAO and it says give us the data from these people X number of days back and do you want to deep load and we say true and then we show the control so nothing changed in the middleware we just allowed an, a different number of days to be sent back to the uh, control which we're showing uh, in this area my apologies in this area so that's it that's the big change there's going to be a, another couple of videos on this as we wrap up some reporting and things like that and then there's going to be uh, 
I know one video that's in the can for uh, some of WPF ideas people have had. Um, I shouldn't say in the can, it's in the pipeline uh, because I'm still making a couple modifications to it. Um, but this is going to be the base project for a couple of things we're working on. Uh, but we do have two other projects running side by side. The uh, Learn C Sharp. If you haven't checked that one out, the Learn C Sharp with WPF. Uh, it's a playlist on here. And then the other one is we're doing some link and link pad stuff. Uh, check it out. It's a playlist on the channel as well. So we do ask that you click the subscribe button. Uh, support the channel. That's your best way you can support us. That's the best way to support the channel. So as usual, I'd like to say thanks for stopping by. Thanks for your attention. Thanks for your time. But most of all, thanks for supporting the channel. We'll see you next time.